Welcome to the Kick-Ass Couples Podcast. This is the place where we help committed couples who want to level up their marriage, experience newfound clarity, hope, and confidence. We're Matthew and Kim, co-hosts and husband and wife. In 26 years together, we've seen a lot and never thought it could be as good as it is right now. We're here to help you successfully navigate the messy, dirty, and wonderful world of marriage. We believe all couples deserve and are capable of experiencing an extraordinary and fulfilling marriage. And each week we're bringing you life lessons from real life successful couples to help you grow and strengthen your relationship. We'll get started right after this message. If you wanna learn how to experience the best, most fulfilling year of your marriage, we invite you to order Matthew's new book, Kick-Ass Husband, Winning at Life, Marriage, and Sex. You can get it at Amazon.com or visit Matthew's website, www.MatthewPHoffman.com. Again, that's Amazon.com or www.MatthewPHoffman.com. And now back to the show. Welcome back to the Kick-Ass Couples Podcast. Today, we're excited to bring to you an amazing couple, Sam Cloward and Jose Cabranes. Sam and Jose are happily married and devoted dog dads living in Central Florida. They are co-owners of their own business, J. Cabranes Photography. This fun-loving duo love to travel and explore. Both Sam and Jose were inspired by their teachers to be living examples of love, kindness, and compassion. Together, they show the world what a happily married gay couple can look like. Catch their adventures through their vlog, Welcome to Sam Jose, and on their Instagram and YouTube channels. Tune in as we discover why these best friends and newlyweds are passionate about bringing sunshine into others' lives. Join us as we explore what inspires them to empower their community of fans by showcasing their love in an ever-changing and dynamic world. We are so excited to welcome Sam Cloward and Jose Cabranes today. Thank you for joining us on the Kick-Ass Couples Podcast. Thank you for having us. <laughs> and you guys are actually in our old home state. So even though we are in Tampa, you guys are in Orlando, right? Is where you all live in Oroquoe yep. area? Fantastic. Orlando, Florida. Oh, well, thanks. We, we visited the sunshine for spring break. We had our kids spring break a couple weeks ago. So we were back on the beach and had... Pretty good weather, except for some freezing cold yeah, rain. Yeah, a rain and then a little cold snap, but... <laughs> but it was nice to be nice back. Nice to be in Florida. In our hometown, so we have a great affinity for Florida. We were uh, Kim was born there, I was raised there, she was too, so we kind of still consider our home state, even though we're hanging our hats up here in Greenville, South Carolina. So we like to start off all of our interviews with the first question. We want to know, what do you guys each think makes you a kick-ass couple? Yeah. You get to start, Jose. Yeah, oh, I get to start. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. Um, I don't know. I think it's the our like our outlook to life and like we hang out. We always we're always very positive and we like to have a good time and uh, we're also hard workers, um, but we somehow always make things work. Uh, and I think that I think in order to be a kick-ass couple, you have to make things work. Yeah. But still, you know, work hard, but still have a good time. I, for me, a lot of it is, is the, just, it's a very comfortable relationship to be in. Um, we've both had previous relationships and, and this one is the one that seems to just mesh and vibe really well, um, from all different aspects, whether that's us supporting one another or doing things together. Uh, it, it feels like a true partnership, unlike other relationships that I may have had in the past. And how long have the two of you been together? Together, we've been together for about five and a half years and married for just over one. Okay. We celebrated our one-year anniversary. Yep. Nice. Yeah. We celebrated our one year back in <laughs> January. So That's great. Congratulations on that first year. We've been only married a short 27. <laughs> um, <laughs> com short time. <laughs> coming up on 28. So, uh, but I tell you what, when it, when, it, when it meshes, like you said, and it goes well, time passes pretty quickly. It really and, does. Uh, and so we're excited. That's the reason. The reason we're doing this is to bring pearls of wisdom from couples like you and all kinds of others and try to help people stay in those relationships and keep them successful. Absolutely. 
So in order to go forward, I like to first go backward and really look to your history, because I believe that we all have a lot of grandpa in our bones. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's really important to bring those things to the surface when we find that partner, that right person. And so I'd love to um, ask you, Sam, first, what did love look like when you were growing up as a child? What did it look sure. like in your family? Um, I, I actually am very fortunate. My parents, I have, I have amazing parents, um, more, so, I recognize it more so as I get older and have gotten older than maybe I did as a, as a child, but, um, I'm one of five kids, second to youngest. I have a younger brother, uh, an older brother and two older sisters. So everything was, was just a huge deal. Like it, it's just a big family, but, um, I, I think love for me growing up was even though the world, there was a lot of things that were happening around my family. I grew up in Salt Lake city, Utah. I was raised LDS, but, um, there was a lot of things that were going on with my older siblings or whatnot. And my mom and my dad always made sure that our home was a safe space for us. And I think regardless of what was going on, witnessing my parents fight to make sure that me going home or us coming home, even if it was, I don't know, Rocky, whatever would have happened, it was still okay to go home. It was still a good place to be. And I had a lot of aunts and uncles and whatnot that were getting in divorces growing up. And my parents never made prob uh, promises or anything of that degree. And one day they sat us all down and they promised us that that they were going to stay together. So witnessing and, and that promise, and they are still together. They've celebrated, they're close to 50 years now together, or, or they're in their somewhere 40 something. I got to remember how my older <laughs> sister is because they're, they're married a year, one year longer, but um, to be able to, as an adult process that and see how big of a promise that really is to convey to children in an environment where they are watching their cousins, parents divorcing or separating and seeing the support that my dad provided my mom growing up. Um, in fact, my dad was always very chivalrous and took care of my mom in ways that a lot of people don't do for their spouses anymore. And like, I remember one time we were at a family Christmas party and my dad just went and got my mom a glass of water. Cause she just asked, Hey, can you go get me a glass of water? And he did. And like his sisters, he has six sisters. They all were giving him a hard time about it as if like my mom was causing like, like, I don't know, like if he was a slave to my mom or whatnot, but it, it was those little things, those acts of love of, you know, like, I just want to make sure my, my partner's comfortable, you know, and, and those type of things. And he still does those little touches here and there. And um, so I was quite fortunate to witness that and see it a, a healthy relationship. So I have a really good, foundation, I think, to see that. And I, that's always what I was looking for as I got older was a type of a relationship where it really was a partnership, uh, supportive from both sides and also an escape into one another because the world can be a crazy place and you need somebody to be able to turn to, to say, Hey, you know, everything's spinning around us right now. Let's just stop it for a moment. And, um, and hold on to one another. And I remember my parents, they would have moments where they would just, you know, hold each other in the kitchen or whatnot. And those moments of just reassurance for one another and sorry, <laughs> but Jose and I, like we do those moments and, and they're just organic and they just happen in the moment. So I I'm fortunate that I was able to have an example like that in my life growing up, um, in a, time when I was seeing a lot of other relationships fall apart from, from a child perspective, that can be pretty scary. So sure, it sounds like you had a lot of great things that were modeled for you and things that you can bring to your relationship that you yes. have now. How about you, Jose? What did love look like in your family when you were growing up? Um, just, it was very similar to Sam's, um, you know, grandparents, um, my grandparents are still together. They, you know, being from a Spanish family, we had we have large family as well. And I think uh, being surrounded by family is a big part of our relationships. Um, but my grandparents were always you know, like together sharing, you know, quality time together with everybody and all that stuff. So we we're all very fortunate to kind of see 
you know, that relationship kind of transition. We all know what's going on with them. Like they may not be like, you know, having a discussion about something or disagreement, but you can tell that there's something going on just because we've been around them for so long. Um, And it's, I, for me, I, it's very like honest and open. They're never like, if they're upset with one another, they're, they're very open about it. Um, But they still, you know, make it through it. They still chat and they, to make things work. And I think that's, that kind of reflects on our relationship as well, because I don't like when, like when something doesn't feel right between us, I'm like, what's going on? Yeah. Let's just, let's just talk. Uh, so I think that's one of the great things that um, I was able to kind of grab from all the past relationships that I've kind of been lucky to be around in and kind of put that into my relationship now. Sure. That's great. Well, so we have uh, three C's, which are kind of three of our 14 pillars. And we really feel pretty strongly that if you do those three things well, they're kind of the cornerstones of making the rest of the relationship successful. And so we're going to start off with the first of those C's, which is commitment. Mm -hmm. So Sam, I would like to ask you, in your relationship with Jose, what does commitment look like? How does it show up and how do you see it uh, reflected in the relationship that the two of you have? Um, I, I think the commitment aspect is, is support of one another to a large degree and accepting that that it could evolve over time, what that commitment looks like as far as, as work stuff changes or personal goals, it's being able to make sure that I'm a support for him and allowing him to be a support for me. Um, and I, I know this is, this comes in, in a lot of the other, uh, pillars and whatnot, uh, they, they all kind of work together, right? That that's, that's how these, these things work. But for me, it, it it's making sure that when I say I'm doing something for him or let's do this together, we're supportive of one another and being able to make sure that we go through that as a couple. And I'm supportive of his goals. Yeah. Uh, I'm getting a little tongue tied. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think for me, it's also that, same thing that commitment is just kind of being there for like, doesn't matter, you know, like I said, if it's a change of job, if it's trying to change plans, going out with somebody, uh, whatever comes up that you're committed to that person. Like for me, for example, like if I know that I have friends that want to go out or they have an event or something, I'm like, Sam is like I, in my mind, I'm like, Sam's committed to come with me. <laughs> like they already kind of know that he's, he's going to be a part of that. And I think that's for me, that's one of the things about commitment. Like we're always there for each other and supporting each other and whatever we, we kind of put ourselves into. Sure. It sounds yeah. like you both are really committed to knowing what the other needs and what the other's desires are and you're willing to make sure that you understand those and you can help support in whatever way is necessary that's absolutely true that's Mm -hmm. right on the nose we we each have different goals personal goals but then we have goals together as a a couple and we want to make sure that those balance one another so we both feel, feel fulfilled not only as individuals, but as a couple. So it it is that support. It's, it is having those conversations and saying, okay, you were on this path. This is what your goals were. Is that still where you're, where you're headed? Cause I want to try and make sure that I'm doing my part to make sure that you can achieve those goals and vice versa and being openly communicative of what my needs are as well. And what my goals are, cause then he can in a lot of relationships, sometimes the other person doesn't allow you to support them. They feel like they have to do it on their own. And so feeling that commitment from Jose is very, it's a beautiful thing because we, like you said, we're very honest with one another. We have those open discussions and open dialogue so that if we're thinking, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling too great about this decision or whatnot what should we do? You know, well, to make sure we're healthy, to make sure the relationship's healthy, maybe we need to make an adjustment here or whatnot and then discussing it. Sure. Sure. And I like what I had, I really like Sam, what you said, you said, 
that commitment changes over time. And it doesn't mean your commitment level varies like, Hey, I'm committed or but right oh, exactly. now I'm not, but it means that you're willing to adjust to the changing season of life. And that's mm -hmm. kind of the flexibility of commitment. The principle doesn't change, but maybe the way you do it does because your partner's needs change or may change. Or they may be facing something they haven't faced before. And if you're still doing the same thing, you may not be supporting the way they are. So I think that's right. I, I love that example. And I think all listeners can uh, relate and appreciate to that. And we find it in our own relationship as well. We're constantly trimming sales to adjust to the needs it could be of the moment of the day, or it could be something that she's taking on. She's never taken on before. Or I can say, Hey, wow, I'm really feeling out there right now. I need you to help. I need you to support me in this way. So yeah, life, life is really dynamic and you may, we can't even plan our, 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 you know, you may have a five-year plan, but that doesn't mean the world will allow you to reach that five-year plan. So yeah, you have to trim the cells, like you said, and, and adjust. And yeah. I think, I think that is one of our strengths is we have the path that we were on when we first started dating or, or seeing each other, as far as our personal or shared goals, they have adjusted and it's because we have been openly communicated about that, that yeah. we have been successful with, with being able to navigate that. All right. So um, that's a great segue into my next question for both of you. And that is on actually on communication. You talked about it just a little bit um, with the commitment factor, but I always like to know how people communicate in their relationship. When do you find the time you're both really busy and doing your own thing, working on yourselves, and then you're coming back together maybe later in the day? And how do you make time for that? And how, when you do communicate, what does that look like? You want to start this? Um, sure. Um, let's see. What, well, for me, like I'm, I guess I'm more like I, I used to be one of those that would avoid those conversations. So it's hard, like, you know, topics or, you know, things. So like, I, I read body language very easily. So like, sometimes if we needed to have a tough conversation or anything, I could see Sam that would get kind of like upset about something or react or anything. And it would be difficult for me to have those conversations. Um, so I found out that the easiest way to do it is as we're like kind of shutting down for bed, but as, as we're laying in bed, you know, kind of talking about our day. And then we would just, you know, tackle small things of that um, conversation. So I'm like, hey, you know, about like yesterday, um, you know, I don't know how, uh, you know, if that was the best way to handle it or or like, you know, when you said this, this kind of made me feel this way. And then that, that way we were just kind of focusing on the actual topic and the conversation and we didn't have to like kind of look at each other or kind of get those reactions. We were just saying everything a hundred percent of just what it was without any, I guess, emotions or, yeah, right. Is it, yeah, we, it. we do a really good job of prioritizing one another and making sure that we do have time to talk to one another. Um, and I, that, that could go back to that commitment piece where, um, it, making sure that the number one person that I need to talk to is this guy. And I make sure that I, we have time to do that. Um, we are pretty good, especially if we're not working, we make dinner together. So we'll sit at the table and, and chat that way. Um, we run a business together, so we have to have those conversations. Yeah. And what we have found is it's just easier to just be open yeah. and just talk about it. So I, I, we both carry our emotions very heavily on the outside. So if we're agitated or anxious or, or, uh, works getting uh, stressed up. Like he said, he's very good at reading the body language. And I think I, I am too. So we're very quick at nipping it in the bud and being like, Hey, um, I, you look stressed. Is, is there anything I can help with just to make sure that it's maybe not something that one of us is doing to the other one or, or causing that additional stress. Um, and he'll ask me, he'll be like, are you, are you, you, you look stressed. Are you okay? And I'll be like, mm -hmm. no, I'm, and I've, I've learned to make sure that I, actually state what I'm stressed about so that if I'm going, yeah, I'm a little anxious, but it's, I I'm thinking about this and I'm thinking about this coming up next week. And I want to make sure that, you know, we need to work on this so we can set, a, we need to make sure that we set aside time for this. And, um, 
Yeah. When it comes to creating a kick-ass marriage, do you ever wonder what you could be doing better? Have you ever thought how helpful it would be to be a part of a like-minded community of other imperfect couples who want to level up in their number one relationship? Come visit Kick-Ass Couples Nation, where you can talk with people just like you who are looking for ways to invest in and increase their joy, commitment, and fulfillment in their most important human relationship. You'll have access to a team of licensed marriage therapists, coaches, articles, podcasts, live webinars, and more. Just visit MatthewPHoffman.com so you can learn more about a community that's ready to help you level up. That's MatthewPHoffman.com so you can become of the growing kick-ass couples nation right now. I love hearing that because I feel that so many of us will say, oh my gosh, I'm just so stressed. I, you know, I'm I'm feeling angst and and we may not say why. Mm -hmm. We may just Mm -hmm. in that moment be just sort of blowing off whatever steam or whatever we may be feeling. But I think it's so important to share with our partner, hey, it's not you. This is what I'm feeling right now. Exactly. But it's driven by X, Y, Z. Or maybe mm-hmm. it is driven by you or, hey, you, you know, I just heard you say this and it hurt my feelings, but we're really busy right now. Maybe we can table this and talk about it later. We have done that before, before too. <laughs> we yeah. have done that before, too. It doesn't always is, have to be handled in the moment, right? Yeah. Right. It, right. It's, it's saying we'll have to talk about that later, but we do need to talk about it. And then making sure that we do set aside the time to address whatever we needed to. Um, I learned very early on in our relationship that if I didn't, if I wasn't clear with Jose, what I was anxious about, or if I looked angry or whatnot, um, he would instantly jump to thinking that it was all him. Mm -hmm. So in order to prevent him from feeling that additional stress that he doesn't need to, I learned very quickly that I needed to be very open and candid with what I was dealing with. Um, stress wise, whether it was work, whether it was family issues, um, not pertaining to him or, or other friends or whatnot. And that definitely helped us build that trust with one another. So when I say I'm anxious, we'll talk about it later. And he goes, is it me? And I go, no, it's not you. He knows it's not him, but he does like to know what is making me anxious because he tries to counter it on his own. <laughs> like, like he'll, he'll do his little things to, to be like, Hey, Hey babe, I made it, you know? Um, and we, we kind of do that back and forth. We yeah. read each other and, and we talked about this even a few weeks ago, how when I'm up and I'm, I'm like, let's do it. We do a very good job of countering one another. So if he's down, I'm very good at being like, okay, I can't, I can't be down this week. I got to be the positive optimist that is like, we can do this. And then something happens and that dynamic shifts and he realizes, Hey, I, you know, do you want to just cuddle and watch a movie? What do we need to do to bring down this stress level or whatever we're feeling right now? Sure. I love what you said, Sam, also about, you know, there's no one else you need to prioritize more than him. And I think, you know, that's that one word is so key in everything that we do with uh, the Kick-Ass Couples podcast, with our membership site. It's really most people's relationships fail or struggle because they don't understand the idea of prioritization. Yes. And especially Mm -hmm. prioritizing their spouse. You know, this woman right here, there's no one else I need to talk to that's more important than her. And exactly. not only that right. she's first on the list, but how we had a conversation about it today. We had a, a phone call conversation today. She called me right after she left the house. And I was in the middle of doing something. She called me and I go, yes. She goes, oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> You're going to treat me like that? <laughs> Come on. And we talked about it. She's like, we're going to talk about that. And we talked about it later. And I'm like, it was, oh my gosh, the power of one word, right? So yes, yeah. I was pri- t- prioritizing her, but I wasn't certain that my tone was what it should be for the person that's most important in my life. I didn't prioritize that. So uh, I, that's, a, that's a huge point, and I appreciate you for saying that. And it's, it's, I had to recognize it as it's you know, a huge truth. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, we talked about communication a little bit, and that kind of leads to our third C, which is conflict resolution. And you know, anybody who says, oh, we have zero conflict, you know, everything is rainbow and sunshine. And, you know, we, we don't have a lot of knockdown. They're not outs. in a real relationship. Yeah, it's <laughs> not reality. What world are you living in? So when conflict does arise, I'd love to know, Jose, what do you guys do? How do you handle it? How do you approach it? 
Can you think of an example of how you guys have worked through conflict in your relationship? Um, well, we, you know, we kind of always go back to that communication aspect of it and we don't let it escalate. You know, we, once we kind of figure that there's something that's, you know, aggravating or we don't agree with something, we immediately like grab it right there and we're like, what's going on? Um, so it doesn't evolve into something more, um, than just a discussion or, you know, a conversation. So we, I think we've kind of learned how to read each other off, um, when it comes to those things. And sometimes, you know, the conversation happens and, you know, we can kind of butt heads together, but we just kind of go, okay, we just gotta give each other some time, cool off. And then kind of think about all those things, you know, was it what I said? What, what could I do better? Let's reflect back on this. Um, and I always like to think back of what he's going through, you know, not even in the relationship, but sometimes it's work. Sometimes it's, you know, conversations with other people that he's had like friends. Um, it's just the day family issues, something, you know, I now go, what's going on. This is in addition to something else. Um, and then we always, you know, like I said, we go back to that communication and we not, you know, we don't really have like large blowouts. We, cause we always, we're always honest with each other. When we do have our blowouts, which happen maybe a couple times a year, um, we usually can sense it's coming, <laughs> if that makes sense. So um, it, it's usually, we've gotten pretty good at making sure that the, the communication aspect has been there yeah. um, I think over a, the years. I think that, a lot of it is when we hold too many things in. Yeah. And then just one little thing just triggers it and it just, <laughs> yeah i think that's that's the biggest thing that we have so okay. go ahead so during our blow-ups if, if we say things that uh, we we're just such candid people normally that being in a relationship with other candid people uh, another candid person <laughs> is going to be he's going to be direct and so we've gotten used to being very direct with what we're thinking like Hey, I really need you to help me with this or this or this. And he's like, well, I'm stressed. I'm dealing with this and this. And I'm like, then we can't do this or work on these, these projects. Cause sometimes we spread ourselves too thin is ultimately what it comes down to. And recognizing that sometimes these external factors are stressing out our relationship. We have, we have after these blown up blowups or, or these arguments or fight, whatever you want to call them, they, we always make sure we take the time to address what was said and what we need to do to move forward. And so when we have an argument or a disagreement, I don't think either of us, we're both so used to not backing down that, <laughs> that we've, we've come up with really good ways of finding that balance of mm -hmm. give and take for our type of personalities. If that makes sense, it's, it's hard to explain, but yeah. we're, we're just so candid. <laughs> um, so you're both are, you can be like this, right? And yes. I, I heard you yeah. say that sometimes you're just really strong butting heads and neither one wants to back down. Uh, how do you get, how do you get away from that? What do you do to really come out of that situation? The, in those situations is, is like what Jose said, we take a moment to step away and, and internalize our thoughts to figure out what is really going on in that situation. So you're giving each other some space and some time yes. to yeah. just decompress a little bit and mm -hmm. uh, maybe reconvene at a, a later time to go back to it. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then, and then when we're a little bit more even killed, then we can sit down and be like, Hey, like the last one we had, which was a few months ago, um, we were like, I was like, Hey, some, some crazy things were said let's talk about those, mm. you know, like, yeah. Wh why were you feeling this? What happened? What's, what spawned that? And again, then that relies back on our communication practices that we've kind of been able to develop of, okay, when you do this, I, I'm unable to finish these certain elements of my day or whatnot. And I need to, I, it just adds on to my frustrations. Sure. And so he goes, okay, well, I, I didn't realize it was that big of a deal for you. So I'll make sure that I'm more aware of that. And 
Uh, I remember when we first started dating, it was like, a, like sometimes you have small issues like socks. Like I'm like, your socks are just all over the house. Like <laughs> take off your shoes there, the socks are there. You take off your shoes there, socks are there. And I'm like, I'm walking around this house always picking up socks and I just need to not have to pick up your socks. Um, his socks are still everywhere. I just have learned to live with it. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't solve it, but you get that's understanding, right? right? right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so, and then he'll point out, well, you leave this here and you leave that there. And I go, okay, okay. It is, it does go both ways. Yeah. And I, <laughs> <laughs> sure. um, but then he is, he's, we have a good balance. I think as far as yeah. we're just way too candid. Like we just tell each other how it is, but that also comes really good with the positive feedback and those emotions as well. Sure. So if we're feeling, I don't think a day goes by where we don't express our love for one another, one way or, or another. Constantly expressing. <laughs> um, and appreciation for the other's support. I don't think either of us would be where we are right now, having made it through COVID, having made it through um, so much that has gone on around us without that balance and and being able to read each other to a degree of i sometimes i have had to let go of my frustrations whether it's ex, like work related or whatnot and just say you know what, jose needs me right now and that goes back to that prioritization and yeah yeah well i think <laughs> that you know as you guys say there's not been a lot of conflict right, right. not a lot of butting heads and I think the antidote to that is you you expressed it again and I want to I want to kind of bring it back and make sure you guys you guys know this probably through experience is that when you're expressing gratitude and appreciation for your spouse, right? You can't be grateful and angry. Exactly. Or, or fearful and grateful right. and and happy and appreciative at the same time. So the antidote to that conflict is hey, you know what I love about you? You know what I appreciate about you? Oh, I want to thank you. I'm so grateful, right? That's leaning in and giving, and that is really a, an incredible antidote for conflict. So it's no wonder there's not a lot of conflict in your relationship, because if you're dedicated and committed to giving that appreciation and gratitude on a regular basis, they're really, you know, we interviewed a couple that have been married just 62 years, okay, longer than all oh, of just, us. just a little bit. have been around. Been alive. <laughs> and, you know, they talked about gratitude and appreciation, and, and she says, you know, when he says that to me, I lift my shoulders up. I hold my chin yeah. high and she goes, I just feel like I'm on top of the world. And so that's a, that's a great feeling. And I love to hear that you guys, you know, like we do are that for each other, do that for each other. It's big. Absolutely, It's an important part. And it does, it, it does help balance out when you do have the conflict because that conflict is so minimal compared to the overall relationship sure. that some of the we don't have little arguments over tedious stuff because we are both very easy at seeing the other side's perspective. And if, if one of us needs to give in, then we, we do. Um, but we're very candid. We're very open. And that, yeah. that goes both way with the appreciation. Yeah. I, we both know, and we talk about it all the time. We would not be as happy as we are right now in our lives without the other person in it. Right. So, and I heard you say, you know, you talked a little bit about just now giving in and it's really just recognizing and understanding where you each are and maybe just um, not so much giving in, but just accepting what's happening. Right. right. And, and it's also, I guess, I guess giving in is not necessarily the correct term. It, it's, certain things may not be a priority for me, but they are for him or, or something that he is passionate about. And so I recognize those things that he's passionate about that I may not be as passionate about for, or, and vice versa. And those are the ones where I'll be like, well, if you want to do it, let's do it. You know, mm -hmm. I don't have an opinion either way. I'm not going to oppose it. If, if that's where you want to head, or if that's where we want to go, then let's let's, I'm here to support that. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. That's a that. win for the us, it right? Is a You're win giving for up a win for me or exactly. just a win for you. But if it wins for the relationship, then you both win. And that's and, and what why, makes a successful relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And why, why nitpick certain little things when it's very minimal to the overall relationship experience? Sure. Well, we have, in addition to the three C's, 
uh, that we just spoke of, we have 11 more pillars and you have a list of those in front of you. And so as you run down and take a look at the list, are there any, Sam, that most resonate with you or one that really just stands out to you that you uh, love? I would say fun and humor. Uh, I think those are incredibly important to our relationship mm -hmm. and to who we are individually. We're both um, experience-based individuals versus things. So that's where a lot of our money goes or our extra income. It goes into us being able to go do things and do them together. Uh, and unity. I, I think for a very large part, like he, Jose said earlier, if we're invited somewhere, people just know they're inviting both of us. And that's just how it's, how it's been. Uh, we run a business together. We worked together for two and a half years. He was at that. Mm -hmm. uh, um, we worked together at a winery here in Florida. He was there for a couple of years before I stepped in. I was hired in as his manager and we worked together for two and a half years. And most of our employees did not even realize we were in a relationship. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. So when they'd find out, they'd be like, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, you guys, you guys handle it. Like per, you very guys are very professional, <laughs> but we were hired in that way. Like it's, a, that's the great thing about small businesses is the owner and the COO, they interviewed both of, you know, they brought us in knowing what that dynamic could look like. And I think that was really kind of amazing for both of us to see how well we were able to work together in another environment. And that provided a lot of comfort for both of us when we decided to start the photography business. So absolutely, we knew we could do it. We had done it for two and a half years. Sure. We could work together sure. and be in a personal relationship. How about for you, Jose? Is there a pillar that um, stands out to you? Um, I would have to agree with Sam as well, doing the fun and humor as well, because that is just a big part of our relationship. Um, you know, even though we're always doing something, always working, um, we always make some time to just have some fun and just make each other laugh because I think that's a very important thing. Um, that sometimes while we're so focused on work, we like forget to just take 10 minutes to just laugh about something. And that really just could change your whole entire day. Sometimes we're like so stressed out and Sam will just kind of like, I'll look over at Sam and he'll make like a funny face or something. And I like, we'll just start laughing at each other for just the smallest thing. And it just turns around the whole entire day. Yeah. Um, so I think that's very important. Um, you know, and also for me, appreciation, because, you know, a relationship is not easy. Um, and it's a lot of work. Um, but like, you know, we mentioned earlier, it's always great to feel appreciated. And it's Sam does that in a way that he doesn't even even need to tell me. Sometimes he just comes out like and just gives me a kiss on the cheek or like gets me a glass of water or like, you know, sometimes he even opens a door for me when we're out like the car door. And it's just those little touches that he does that he may not say, hey, I appreciate your thank you for the or that. But it's just those little touches that are very important in our relationship. And I think those stand out a lot. I hear <laughs> appreciation come out a lot when we ask this question. And so just those little touches, like you said, he may not have to say anything at all, but his actions are showing mm -hmm. you that he cares that yeah. he's thinking about you. And, um, I like to always say that he's got your back, mm -hmm. right? You yeah. feel yes. so supported in that way. So absolutely. And I love also the, the fun and humor. <laughs> I feel like couples, sadly, do not have a lot of that in their relationship. And I know it gets hard, right? You work all day and then you come mm -hmm. home and maybe you have a family and you're tending to your family um, or you have other things that are pulling you in other directions and you forget to have fun and play together. So I hope our listeners hear that and um, are able to go out and really implement that in their relationships. Yeah. And that leads kind of kind of neatly into our next question, which is a concept that we call spillover thinking. And uh, Kim and I are big proponents. We think uh, that the good in our relationship spills over into a lot of other areas of our lives and that really this relationship, this number one relationship, you spend more time in it. Some people spend a lot of time at work, but I'd love to hear how does the goodness of your relationship spill over to other areas of each of your lives? Wow. That's a big question. Yeah. <laughs> I, 
we do everything together. <laughs> I mean, we, I mean, we have separate jobs, we work, but I, I, I think in a lot of our other aspects of life, um, and even in our surroundings, like, um, for example, Jose gets along really well with my parents. Uh, and when we go out, it's a great group. It's, it's amazing. And I love that my parents accept him as my, as their son-in-law. And so that's, that's one aspect of that spilling over into, um, my personal life from before I met him and being able to still be a positive presence in that aspect of my life. Uh, and even from a supportive aspect. So when we talked about reading that body language or understanding or, having that balance when he's down and I'm up, you know, being the, the optimist or vice versa, it'll even trickle into that a little bit where if I'm feeling down and he's sending me texts like, Hey, hope you're having a great day. Um, it, it does help the day at work. So knowing that you've got a great person to go home to, and there's that comfort at home, it's, that helps other aspects of your life feel more comfortable because even if you're having a bad day, at least you have an escape. At least you've got a best friend that you can talk to. At least you've got somebody that if you don't know the solutions to the problems, you can use them as a sounding board. And so in that respect, for me, there is a lot of other positive impacts throughout my daily life just because of knowing that, I have Jose. It, it makes a lot of that other stuff easier to digest. Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. That okay. makes sense. Yeah. How about for you, Jose? How do you see um, the goodness of your relationship spill over into other areas of your life? Um, I think it's just the positivity of our relationship that kind of, you know, the world that we live in is a, can be stressful and can be a lot at times, but I think I always, Throughout my day, I'm always thinking about Sam. I'm always like, you know, what are we going to do? What's the next thing that we're looking forward to? What are like our goals? And sometimes even just, you know, I work in in a very front facing role. I, I speak to a lot of people throughout the day. Um, and I'm always sharing our stories that we have, like all of the adventures that they recommend. What should we do? Oh, you should do this. And, you know, all these things. So like, all of our, like the relationship just like brings off the positivity and all the great things that, that we shared together. So I think it's, doesn't matter if I'm having a bad day. I, I always think of just, you know, I'm, you know, appreciative of the relationship that I have with Sam and that is just always, it's always a great time. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, I have a fun question for you. We're going to go back to your unmarried selves. And um, if you, Sam, could put your hands on your unmarried self's shoulders and give yourself a piece of advice, one piece of advice, what would that be? Knowing what uh, you know now. <laughs> um. That's a hard question. <laughs> now, Jose, if you happen to know, you're welcome to take that on um, first. Your unmarried self. What would you tell your unmarried self of something Stop that you've Stop leaving learned? socks all over the house. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Learn no, to pick um, up after yourself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I think for me, it's, you know, before I, I was never really patient. Uh, and I think, you know, when, um, we started kind of, you know, dating or before we even dated, I never really had a lot of patience. And I think being in this relationship just taught me that to just kind of take it easy, take it slow and really just be there in the moment. Cause sometimes, you know, for me, I was just like, okay, well, it doesn't matter. And I would just kind of push it off to the side and never really thought about it and never actually paid attention to what that other person was kind of feeling. Um, so now like that we're married, it's, it's now a true commitment that, you know, I, I don't believe in, 
you know, oh, well, it doesn't work out. Okay, we'll see you later. No, it's, we're stuck together. Like, you no, know, we have to make it work. So for me, it's, you know, sometimes actually taking that time and just really thinking about things and, you know, being there for that person and kind of taking that time. For me, I guess it's now that I've had some time to process. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, I'd probably shake myself and say, don't stress so much. Um, I, I, I always saw myself in a very happy relationship just because I had seen it. I, like, like you said, I, I had witnessed one from my parents, you know, so it's, it's, well, I would love to find that. I want to see that in my life and dating is rough. Dating is like a, it's like the worst form of self torture. <laughs> it can be ugly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, e even if the dates themselves aren't bad, you, you literally go out with different people and you, ex you have to like slowly expose yourself, like express yourself or showcase who you are and hope that that person is doing the other, the same thing, honestly. Sure. And it, it just felt like a lot of work. And when Jose and I, from the very first date, it, it just flowed. It didn't feel like the amount of work it had been with other individuals. And I think if I had stressed a little less and just focused on other things within my life, I still would have eventually crossed paths with Jose or, or whatnot that I didn't need to be as worried as I felt like I was at the time, I guess. Sure. <laughs> I think that's fair. This day and age, it's so difficult to trust people because a lot of people are not who they say they are. You know, a lot at of social media mm -hmm. dating and, you know, you don't even know if that person really looks like that <laughs> until you're exactly. actually sitting across from them. You hear some really scary stories out there and I'm not saying that's how you met, but it's just overall trust in people um, has broken down. And mm -hmm. so um, I, I, I hear you and I think that it's really important when you find somebody that you can trust and you can believe. Yes. In a big deal yeah it's a, it's definitely a different feeling when it when the the social media image is who they actually are and you're like oh this is all genuine this is who this person really is and they don't lie to the world like some of these other individuals that you may have gone out with did and luckily neither of us having had bad dating situations before that or, or relationships that crashed and burned we do appreciate what we have because of those situations. And we do see how this is different from other previous um, people that we may have met. Sure. Well, you guys have been incredible and shared some great experiences. If people want to learn more about you guys or your businesses or what you do, where can people find you? Where should they look? Uh, we have our own website. It's welcome to Sam Jose.com. And uh, we also do a vlog together on YouTube, um, also under Welcome to Sam Jose. Uh, so we kind of have the play on Welcome to San Jose, but it's Sam Jose. So, um, <laughs> so our goal, our, in a lot of our stuff, we just, uh, that connects, the website connects um, everything together, his photography stuff, um, jacobrannisphotography.com. And he's the main master photographer and I'm kind of the business support person. Um, I do have some experience with photography, but I'm nowhere near where Jose is quality wise. Uh, <laughs> um, but they can check all that out uh, just through our Welcome to Sam Jose website. We have links, uh, connections to all of the other stuff that we do. Awesome. Well, we thank you both so much for your time. For Thanks for having opening us. Opening up to us and sharing with us. A uh, little bit of the in intricacies and intimacy of your relationship. We're, we're grateful. A lot of great things there. And I know our listeners will benefit from it. So we, again, thank you and look forward to connecting with you guys again soon. Thank you. Thank you. That's all we've got for this episode of the Kick-Ass Couples Podcast. If you like the content of the show, you'll love Matthew's newly released book, Kick-Ass Husband, Winning at Life, Marriage, and Sex. To receive a digital mini book of quotes and images from the book, all you have to do is rate this show and leave a review in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you tune in to listen. Then email us a screenshot of your review 
at podcast at kickasscouplespodcast.com and we'll get it over to you right away. Until next time, remember, happily ever after doesn't just happen, it's on purpose. <laughs>